compensatory education. Compensatory education. Why are we talking about that now? Because it's coming up for all of us. Because all of us experience COVID-19. So we're going to talk about compensatory education. This is part two of four. Don't miss any of them. Um, tag a friend. Share the post. We want people to know all of the six million children in America who are receiving services with special education and even 504 kiddos have rights uh, that they need to know about before they make those decisions this summer when we return back to brick and mortar. So if we haven't met, I'm Karen Mayer Cunningham, special education advocate. Um, I'm the special education boss helping people navigate and negotiate the IEP uh, 504 process. So the purpose of compensatory education is to provide a relief. So we trained on dispute resolution. So of course, we hope that you are never going to have a dispute with anybody in special education. But if you do, we talked about uh, the five types of dispute resolution options that are available for you at the state and federal level. Number one is gonna be a state written complaint. Number two is gonna be mediation. Number three is gonna be due process with resolution session at the beginning um, as number four. And then number five is an Office of Civil Rights, U.S. Department of Education, um, federal filing. And so when you have those filings um, and you come to an agreement, a resolution, a conclusion, um, a fixing of the problem, um, a lot of times um, a very large part of those awards damages, settlements, agreements um, are comprised of compensatory education. And it's really a, a meaningful part of a child's um, relief when they didn't have an educational benefit and when FAPE was not delivered. So let's talk about compensatory um, education. Obviously, this is not at the end of a, a due process or a filing, um, but it is applicable to everybody with a kiddo in special education right now. So. The legal um, definition of compensatory education um, is a service uh, that's provided as an equitable remedy when the responsible party, the educational authority, has failed to provide a child with a disability an appropriate education as required by IDEA. Now, what's important about that is that the remedy is designed to deliver an eligible student with the services that the student should have received pursuant to IDEA's guarantee of a free, appropriate public education. Um, and a more easy way to understand it, or a simpler way to understand it, is that compensatory education, the purpose of it is to put the student in the position that he would have occupied had the IDEA violation not occurred. Now, nobody that I know of in special education sent out COVID, right? So it's not a situation where the school didn't deliver what you agreed upon, the school denied you something from the gate, uh, but obviously um, the delivery of FAPE, a free appropriate education didn't occur um, because we weren't available to be in school. And so um, we wanna make sure that what we didn't get delivered to our student that has impacted them is going to be consideration for compensatory education. Hey, Karen. Um, so what does that look like? So there is a scope, one of my favorite words, she doesn't like the word scope. There's a scope of relief that's provided and accessible to parents, and you need to know what that is. So did your student receive, hey guys, did your student receive a free and appropriate public education during COVID? They did not. There's no way that they could have received the totality of the IEP document. Um, there probably weren't 22 non-disabled peers in your living room. If there were, God bless you. Um, so it just wasn't delivered. So um, the longest time kiddos have been out average is about 10 weeks. That's 15,700. Is that, a, no, it's 15, that's 17, sorry, let's just start that over. It's 17,500 minutes of education they didn't get. They didn't get a special education product. And while we certainly love schools and and um, all sorts of uh, educators and evaluators and administrators, it just wasn't the same thing. A lot of people have been offered compensatory education, comp ed, 
and they're being offered all sorts of amazing things that really aren't compensatory education, like ESY is not compensatory education. ESY is extended school year, and it's to work on those uh, skills, those goals that you've maintained during the school year so that we don't lose or regress. So that does not make up for what you missed. It just doesn't. So I'd really gently, because I'm gentle, caution you on ex accepting ESY as um, a means for compensatory education. Now, certainly more kiddos than not would have met eligibility for ESY because part of that legal component is concern for loss of critical skills. So that would have been very appropriate. So when we're looking at compensatory education as a relief, an educational benefit for the student, we're not going to be able to make that determination until when? When we come back to school, because you don't know the impact till we get back to school. And the impact might be profound and it might be non-existent. There are some of my kiddos with neurological differences that are like, this is awesome. I get up, I do my work, I'm in my pajamas, and I'm watching Disney Plus at 1030. They can focus, there's not distractions. Um, it's been amazing for them. So I'm certainly not saying, hear me, I am not saying that every kiddo in COVID is going to need compensatory uh, education. I am saying most of them will need something. So let's look at the scope of remedies. And of course, this is under um, um, uh, a legal framework. This is under uh, case law. So we have the law, right? And then we have case law. That's an interpretation of the law and how it's delivered across circuits. So we are in the great state of Texas in the Fifth Circuit. And wherever you are, there's, uh, I want to say there's 10 circuits. Um, I'm not an attorney, uh, but this is one of 10 states that I'm allowed to uh, represent families at mediation and due process. Um, and so I've looked at a gazillion thousand documents over the years. And so let's look at some of the judicial actions and the scope of remedies that have been delivered in the past. Um, so these are some of the most commonly requested and commonly awarded remedies um, at these cases. Again, at compensatory education, this is under um, uh, Farron C versus the School District of Pennsylvania, 55 IDELR 274, that's the docket number. So it said, services are a remedy that calls for services above and beyond services normally due to a student and are intended to make up for a district's failure to provide FAPE. The purpose is not to provide additional benefit to the student, but rather to put the student in the position he would have occupied if the district had complied with its IDEA obligations. As such, many co courts have rejected this cookie cutter approach. And I'm already seeing it in some districts, this cookie cutter, um, we'll just, this is what y'all get, this is what y'all get. And that's not individualized. So again, remember this, compensatory education is for this. It is to put the student in the position that he would have occupied had the IDEA violation not occurred, had, had COVID not occurred. So where was he on track? We had 27 weeks of instruction. Where would he have been with those last eight, nine, 10 weeks of instruction? That's where we're looking. So, um, so I want you to know that the kinds of reliefs that have been, the scope of reliefs that have been, have been awarded. So one of them is tuition um, uh, reimbursement. And so let's talk about what that might look like. So over COVID or over the summer, many families that I serve um, are hiring tutors, they're hiring ABA professionals, they're hiring um, um, VI professionals, or, or they're hiring their own physical therapist because the student has to have uh, these services, not to make gains now, but not to lose any more that they've had. So that would be a consideration, something that you could put on the table um, as compensatory education that's in the scope of relief. So the scope of relief has to be an educational benefit for the child with a disability, but that would have been an educational benefit as you had to out of pocket pay for those services. So those have been awarded um, uh, in, in many cases. Um, so one of the reasons that um, compensatory education has been delivered in tuition is because parents do make up for what the LEA didn't provide in some cases. And I have a few cases where we were denied um, uh, testing during COVID 
even though a child was already in special ed and the school had enough functional data uh, to move forward on some things. So they're gonna look at all of those parameters. Did you go under the guidelines from the great Betsy DeVos and your state director? Because the federal government and the state government gave us great liberty. April 27th, 2020, Secretary DeVos came out and said, mm, nobody's getting a pass on anything. Not when it comes to kids. Now there are, um, there have been waivers towards reporting and what to do with certain monies and um, those sorts of administrative pieces, but the product delivered to the student, listen to me, there was no waiver, there was no waiver. So I, I would greatly caution you getting caught up into, this is, this is what we're doing for compensatory education. Um, this is what the other families are taking. Don't, don't get caught up in the middle of that. Um, so there have been um, tuition reimbursement. Um, some parents have moved to private school um, and they're gonna be able to show that a student's made great gains, appropriate gains, um, and those will be consideration for reimbursement. Um, sometimes uh, compensatory education services, the scope might be um, required for relating to evaluations, IEPs, or placements. So I've had a few IEP meetings during COVID where there was um, going to be a recommendation of a placement change during COVID. Of course, you know what I said. We're not doing that. Um, but I was able to obviously represent these families and, and share our position. So most people don't have an advocate. They don't have representation. And so court rulings may come in the order of um, where a parent uh, was not uh, delivered the existing IEP where the school revised an IEP, um, and then where the school did not develop an IEP that was appropriate. So even during COVID, if we had needed to make adjustments on an IEP, change a goal, uh, deliver a new goal, add a new therapy, which it could have all been done by teletherapy, and we didn't because of COVID, um, then that's gonna be a problem. Hey guys, um, it's amazing what school districts are saying now. We are waiting on Betsy, we're just waiting. You know what, Betsy's waiting on you. Nobody's waiting on Betsy. She said, get to work kids, deliver faith. Think outside the box, do what great teachers do and deliver the product. So again, you want to be informed. There's nothing more irritating than to find out you made a decision based on a deficit of information. So um, relating to, so relief might become coming in, in in relation to evaluations, IEPs, and or placements. So during COVID, we've had a lot of um, evaluations return. We've had a lot of, because school just kept happening, special ed kept happening. So there have been um, some IEEs that have come in during COVID and schools have not agreed with the recommendations. And that could be something that you consider or might have to file on um, as well with your states. Uh, monetary damages. And so I represent a lot of families and filings. Um, I always have, um, <clears throat> besides representing them in person, and so usually, um, while there's no language that you cannot, um, there's rarely, rarely, um, monetary, monetary damages awarded in a state proceeding. So due process, um, can't say that so much about mediation, but in a due process hearing, an order from an impartial due process hearing officer, it's very rare that monetary, monetary damages are awarded in the order. However, the US Supreme Court has not explicitly decided whether parents can or cannot seek damages for FAPE violations. Um, and then a number of circuit courts have held that monetary, monetary damages are available under 504 as a general rule. Isn't that interesting? That monetary damages are available under 504 but not. Um, they haven't ruled either way um, in federal court. So we have cases this year that have been at the state level and then now we're filing in federal court uh, for punitive monetary damages. So there's a scope of relief that can be delivered. And so again, it's an educational benefit um, for your student. Hey Carla, can I ask the LEA to pay for speech because the LEA did not provide speech during COVID? So that is, um, uh, that's something you certainly can ask for. There's a, a I don't want to say this the wrong, wrong way. I've never said it the wrong way. There's a right way to do it. So um, I would have all of that ready to go when you go back to your meeting for consideration of compensatory education. <clears throat> I would have your receipts. I would have the delivery times. I would have 
what they're working on. Because if you got a private service, which is great, but it wasn't tied to the IEP document, then the, then the courts are not going to charge them with not delivering FAPE because it wasn't part of FAPE that we agreed on. So let me give you an example. So we know that um, school-based uh, speech language therapy is often different from uh, private-based speech language therapy or medical model. So you wanna make sure that if you were delivered speech and you're gonna request um, compensatory damages that it was tied to what? <gasps> the IEP goals, right? So be really clear on that. If you're gonna go back and ask for OT, if you're gonna go back and ask for PT, if you're gonna go back and ask for o &M, if you're gonna ask for VI, adaptive PE, all those things, make sure, make sure it's tied to the IEP, okay? Because that is a rock you don't wanna die on. So, um, Lots of um, opportunities there. I mean, we've got, and we're going to go over um, in the last two sessions, what is compensatory? What are the ways that we can deliver it? Um, how would I request for a family to have it delivered? And um, how do you, um, how do you measure what is appropriate? Because the courts, which is where I like to read, and not necessarily an IP meeting, the courts have gone way over and the courts have gone minute to minute and the courts have gone with a reduction. And again, all of this is based on data and um, the product that was delivered. So I'm hearing a lot of stuff about compensatory um, education is gonna be based upon how much the parent participated. Wow, because I don't ever see that in the Individuals with Disability Education Act. It's the weirdest thing. The Individuals with Disabilities Act was about the school and the child. So really be on the lookout for that um, because uh, we're not responsible. I'm not responsible for my child being delivered FAPE uh, during COVID. I'm not responsible for my child being delivered uh, FAPE during Harvey. I'm not responsible for my child being delivered FAPE, oh, ever. You know why? Because I'm not the child with a disability and I am not the um, educational setting and I don't take federal funds, but thank you. So remember, be really clear on what um, conversations, emails that you're getting involved with about compensatory education. Certainly there's nothing better than asking another woman, tell a woman, tell the world. However, what you want for your child should be as specific as possible. So just because the neighbor got 20 hours of speech, that may not be appropriate for you. It may not be appropriate for you because that would overwhelm your child or it may be not even close to appropriate. So. Um, Think about what was not delivered in those 17,500 minutes. And that's when you're gonna go back to your what? Your little book, your data, all of your emails, what happened, when it happened, how long it was, and how much of that virtual learning was tied to an IEP, an actual goal. And I, I, I'm seeing with my families, and I, I serve hundreds of families, my team, we're seeing very little that was tied to a goal. And, and that's fine, but you're gonna need to be ready with your data when you return back to brick and mortar. If you guys have a question, just drop it in the queue. Thanks for your support, we love you right back. Uh, thank you for all the, you guys send us questions. Um, so if you have a question that you don't want anybody else to see, you can always just send it to Karen at specialeducationboss.com. We have lots of good stuff coming for you. Our team is gonna put together a handout at the end of the week uh, for compensatory time, how you measure that, um, how we get it, what it's for, what it could look like, um, because you want to be the special education boss when you return back to your child's IEP meeting. And remember, we're doing this for one reason, <gasps> one reason, successful student outcomes. And when we get it right for the child, and we get it right for the child a lot, we get it right for everybody. We'll see you guys in the next video.